deadly mass shooting in California. It happened inside Geneva Presbyterian Church in Orange County on Sunday afternoon. Authorities now say this was a politically motivated hate incident. The suspect has been identified as 68 year old David Cho of Las Vegas. Now, Cho is being held on a $1 million bond. Authorities say he drove about four hours from Las Vegas to Laguna Woods to target this Taiwanese congregation. Close to 50 congregants had gathered for luncheon for former pastor Billy Chang. Police say Cho came in with two guns, even tried to trap people inside. And as those bullets penetrated the sanctuary, law enforcement says it was the worshipers and pastor Dr. John Chang who hogtied the suspect and grabbed the attacker's weapons before police responded at the scene. Without the actions of Dr. Chang, it is no doubt that there will be numerous additional victims in this crime. There's no direct connection to the church or any member of the church that we are aware of, but this investigation is still ongoing. One victim died, five others hurt, four of them critically wounded. Cho is due before an Orange County judge tomorrow morning. The accused shooter is a husband and father who neighbors say was estranged from his family. Yeah, he owned an apartment building near Twain and Decatur, where 13 Chief Investigator Darcy Spears joins us live with what neighbors are saying about a man police are calling pure evil. Dave and Trisha, the emotions from neighbors we spoke to range from fear to shock to confusion. Some say they did not know the man who owned the building behind me. One who did says that he was, well, he paints a very interesting picture of, of David Cho. Balmori Oriana was David Cho's tenant and next door neighbor for five years. During the time I met him, he was a sweet old man, you know, brought gifts to my, my kids every day. Uh, think about candy or uh, rice, cooking oil, or beans, or anything. To him, Cho was a good, attentive landlord who routinely checked on his tenants and tried to keep crime out of the complex, but he says that wasn't the case for all. Someone, um, previous tenants came and kind of beat him up really bad to where they almost killed him. You see the scars in his head. You see the scars all over his arm, all over his chest. He last saw Cho in February. His mental shift started acting up two months prior to that, uh, when he was losing his um, his building. Cho also lost his family when his wife and son moved to Taiwan. And from there on, he was trying to get uh, government help, and I know he was being rejected. A licensed security guard who neighbors say only worked part time, Cho's struggles deepened. A week before he disappeared, he told me that he was going to live in the streets, but he just didn't know where that he was going to do his best to live in his car. Police say he drove that car to Orange County on Saturday. It was stocked with guns Cho legally bought in Las Vegas, as well as ammunition magazines and Molotov cocktails he placed around the church. Well, I'm in shock. You can't help but feel scared knowing somebody so close is so dangerous. It's terrorizing. We are waiting to hear back from Metro as to whether Cho had a criminal record here in Las Vegas. We're also waiting to hear back from a man who we believe to be one of Cho's sons who still lives here in the United States. We sent a text and made a call but have not yet gotten a response. We will, of course, continue to look into what role Cho's life here in Las Vegas played in his actions in California. Live in Spring Valley, Darcy Spears, 13 Investigates.